Hello, Internet. This is Scott with Scott's Garage, standing in my father's garage, working on my favorite project, this 1946 CJ2A. This is an early edition. I found that out uh, with this project. And in this video, I will be showing you how to do a brake job. Keep watching. Welcome to Scott's Garage. Welcome literally to my garage. Whether it's working on a daily driver or a project car, or a project around the home or the yard or the patio, a pallet project, Scott's Garage is a place for do-it-yourselfers. Everything is do-it-yourself. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so I ordered parts this time from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. They are in the state of Oregon. Uh, really impressed with them. I, I called ahead, got uh, just tremendous uh, support from them in my project, which is a CJ2A early version. And I got a few extra parts here too. But what's nice about Ron Fitzpatrick is that uh, they just have a really, it comes with a, a catalog, but uh, just really clear uh, photographs, better than the one I've seen, color diagram. Uh, they just uh, threw that in. Uh, I'll definitely uh, use that. Uh, threw in some Skittles. You can see the information here, online assistance. I, I did call in uh, just to clarify some things and I talked to Scott and just, uh, again, very, very helpful. Now, this brake kit includes the hoses that I need. I have a master cylinder and this uh, CJ2A is an earlier version and the, and the, the, the difference is that uh, there's threaded, uh, threaded part of the master cylinder just like the military jeeps had. Um, then after that they, they uh, redesigned these so that there's no threads in the master cylinder but anyway uh, that's, that's part of the kit. Um, all the, the seals for, for each wheel is there. Um, some S-hooks and, and clips uh, some crush uh, washers, it's all there. Um, now as far as the slave cylinders, there is the front ones which are one inch. Um, it's just in, it's a one inch diameter. And then the rears are three quarter inch for the CJ2A, uh, which makes sense. Most of the braking power is, is in the front uh, on all brakes. I, I believe it's like an 80-20 ratio or 20% of your braking power is in the back. So a small, smaller uh, slave cylinders for the back. And then you can see here are the brake shoes. So they're all the same, uh, but uh, brand new uh, brake shoes. And from joesmortarpool.com is where uh, Ron Fitzpatrick got uh, the brake shoes. Um, so let's get started. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna remove the brake light sensor. Uh, this is a, a one inch. Okay, the next thing we do is remove this Y fitting. And I've already uh, loosened this. While it was still on the Jeep, I was able to loosen it. You want to just kind of crack it open, but uh, so it shouldn't be too bad now. It's three quarters of an inch. Proves me in pretty good shape. It's gonna clean up the part. Okay, here's the new master cylinder. Again, this is an early. Uh, meaning that one, there's a there's two places that are threaded, just like the World War II vehicles, and then this just goes straight through the bolt that goes through here. And that's why it's called early. So I'm just going to take the this out, and this will go in there. And there's a crush washer there that I cleaned up. It's very important that crush washer be in there so it doesn't leak. I have no 
idea if that's the right position or not. We'll find out. And then this, of course, goes in here. And that's one inch. I'll do the fi final tightening when it's in place. This obviously is hand tight. So I'll I'm going to tighten both of these later. Okay. So I took the rubber boot off of this, and that way I can get it on here. It goes right in there. You just pull it on like that so it's a nice tight fit. And now I'll have to position this into there. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna take it underneath the Jeep. Uh, what that is is a heat shield, a heat shield for the, the master cylinder. I'm leaving it off at this point. I wanna uh, bleed the brakes and make sure there are no leaks and then, then I'll put that back on there. And I, I thought I had videotaped something earlier on the actual install of the master cylinder, but uh, the camera wasn't working correctly. So this is after the fact. Uh, but let me take it under here and show you what I did. Okay, so I'm not sure how clear that is, but in front of the master cylinder, you have a, a Y a connection, and I hooked up both uh, brake lines, and I hooked up the, the switch, uh, the presser switch for uh, the brake lights, which don't work at this point, but it's hooked up, and put a cotter key uh, back in the, the rod here. So everything is tight, and I will have to loosen a couple of bolts to put that um, heat shield back on. But again, I want to be able to see everything, make sure nothing's leaking at this point. So that's it for the master cylinder at this point. The next thing is to pull the hubs. I was very fortunate. Um, I purchased this hub puller on eBay, very heavy duty one. But actually no problem at all uh, pulling all the hubs, which is surprising since this vehicle, it's probably been about 30 years since these hubs have been pulled. Uh, but again, it was absolutely uh, no problem at all. And I hope that's the same uh, with you. Okay, the next step is to detach the, the brake line. Um, and there's, a, there's a, the, the slave cylinder but where it attaches in the back there. And only use a, a flare nut wrench. Now this is a 3 8 size. Don't use a regular wrench. You'll strip it out, especially on these old vehicles. It's the only way to go. Um, Pittsburgh's a real cheap, you know, 10 bucks a whole set at Harbor Freight, or you can see the link in the description uh, below. Um, now, I don't force anything. These brake lines will twist and bend, and you'll ruin them. So I'm going to try it out first to see if it'll pop. Otherwise, I'll use a little bit of penetrating catalyst, and, and I prefer blaster. Okay, I had to spray some blaster in there. It's just a little bit uh, too tight. There we go. Okay, don't force anything. There we go. Set that off to the side. Okay, what I'm doing here is removing the front wheel hubs. These are 916 size. It helps if you crack these ahead of time uh, before you take the tire off. And now I'm taking out the bearing. I had packed this bearing, oh, about a, about a year ago or so, uh, but I'm just being very careful and, and pulling that bearing out. Okay, now I'm on the front of the vehicle and there's a little S brake tube right here. It goes to the slave cylinder on the front, but then also here. And I'm just going to loosen this one, and I'm going to spray it with Catalyst, first of all. Blaster. Okay, get the, the wrench on there. Let's see if it pops. 
There we go. That's all she took. And Okay, here's a better shot of the S-Tube. I have new ones, but uh, this is a good shape. I, you know, uh, it's authentic, I might use the original. Um, so I'll, I'll blast that with blaster and take this off and then just start taking it apart. Take off the old uh, slave cylinder and take off the brake shoes and we'll begin to clean it up and put on the new ones. Okay, what I'm doing here is removing the nuts on the cam bolts. I think these are three quarter inch nuts. I'm using a crescent wrench on the cam side. Be very careful, you don't want to strip those out at all because you want to reuse them. Once the nuts are off, I just have to tap them out. Uh, off camera, I, I wash these plates really well. Uh, what I'm doing here is attaching the, the hoses. The, the kit came with four hoses, three of which are used on the front, uh, two on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. And then there's a longer one that goes in back that I'll get to um, later. Now the front hoses here, uh, they allow the, the, the wheel to turn. Uh, they're, they're longer and they're flexible and that's the purpose. But, but the old ones there are rotten and need to be replaced. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, spray some blaster on the connections where the metal uh, rod comes in. Please notice that on the old hose side, uh, right here, on the back side of, of where the, the metal hose comes in, um, that's a 5 8 Whenever you do brake lines, if you can put a wrench on the back side, um, it, you have a much better chance of, of not hurting the, the original. So I'll be putting this right there and using the, the 3 8 on the back side and we'll pop that loose. Okay, there are clips, one here and one on this back side on the, the, the metal plates, the metal clips. I'm just gonna take a, a hammer and a screwdriver and just pop that off on both sides and then the hose will come right out. Okay, moving on to the driver's side. So I didn't uh, film it, but uh, exact same thing as the other side, this shorter hose that goes here. Uh, here is the, uh, the S hose that uh, goes in there. But there's a longer hose on the driver's side, not the passenger side, but the driver's side, there's this longer hose. And I just want you to note something. You know, so this is the where it's clipped in, right, as compression fitting. Um, but this side, it's not a compression fitting, and you have to be very careful. And in the bag here, you'll notice that there is a washer. That's a crush washer. That has to go on this end um, in order to seal correctly. Okay, you can see a T here on the driver's side, front axle, and this is where the, the longer hose goes into. So the one that we need, the crush washer, I think it's gonna be easier to simply put the crush washer right on top there. And we're gonna uh, drop this down. Okay, so I got it started, and it's just much easier to just turn it like this. It's already started, just get as much as you can. It's not bound by anything up there. And tighten it, it's 5 8 so then we'll, we'll tighten it now and crush that washer. Okay, that should do it. Now we will hook up this, this upper end. And to do that, it goes in place. And we'll put the, the clip in there. Okay, it's time now to rebuild these. And we're simply at this point working on the passenger side. And you know, there, there's the, the front of the vehicle, the rear of the vehicle, obviously. So we're gonna make this the front, this the rear. These plates are identical. However, the components are slightly different. The brake shoes are identical but the slave cylinders are different sizes. So if you notice, this is for the, the rear, and it says three quarter inch left or right for nine inch brakes. And the, the front slave cylinder, it says one inch left or right. And what it means is that the, the, the slave cylinder in the front is bigger um, than the one in the rear. And there's a reason for that. On almost all vehicles, most of the braking power occurs in the front brakes. Uh, not the rear brakes. I think it's like 80%, 20%. Therefore, it makes sense you have a bigger slave cylinder in the front. Uh, the, the sets of brake shoes are the same for, for front and back, 
and we'll get into that after I get the slave cylinders on. Okay, Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep parts. They get some of their parts from Joe's Motor Pool and really quality stuff. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about the brake shoes. Um, so first of all, you know, that's the, the spring. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, these are the, the cam washers for lack of a better term. And, and I'll show you those exactly. I'll install those in a second. But uh, I want you to look at the shoes and please note that uh, there's a there's a long shoe and a, and a short shoe, and here here's the deal. Just like the front brakes had more power, braking power than the rear brakes, like 80-20. Likewise, um, when when you want the the longer pad on the front uh, side of the of the drums. So this is just the opposite. When these so these go on, they go like that. So the the front side. So the the long side is going to be as I put this together, like so, and, and the short side here, and then as we put it on the vehicle, the short side is the, the rear side. Now, now both front and back, uh, the shoes um, are identical. Okay, the next thing is to make sure that the, the slave cylinders that, where, where they fit into, where the brake shoes fit into, that, that these things here are, are horizontal. Okay. Okay, Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. They get some of their parts from Joe's Motor Pool and really quality stuff. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about the brake shoes. Um, so first of all, you know, that's the, the spring. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, these are the, the cam washers for lack of a better term. And, and I'll show you those exactly. I'll install those in a second. But uh, I want you to look at the shoes and Please note that uh, there's a there's a long shoe and a, and a short shoe, and here, here's the deal. Just like the front brakes had more power, braking power than the rear brakes, like 80-20. Likewise, um, when when you want the, the longer pad on the front uh, side of the of the drums, so this is just the opposite. When these so these go on, they go like that. So the, the front side, so the, the long side is going to be, as I put this together, like so, and, and the short side here, and then as we put it on the vehicle, the short side is the, the rear side. Now, now both front and back, uh, the shoes um, are identical. Okay, I put the cam washers in place. We'll put the plate in next. And then just position the, the cam bolt so that it, it there's an obvious way, there's a curved area, and then a 90. It only goes one way. You may need to take a hammer and just uh, tap it down slightly. It'll turn them over. Okay, when you put the bolts through, the cam bolts, don't forget to put the lock washers in place before you put the nuts on. Okay, I use the crescent uh, holding this part and three quarter inch, I tighten it. Notice that they're pigeon toed in. Pretty sure that's the right place to start when we start uh, setting the brakes. Okay, the kit came with uh, seals for the rear axle here. Uh, there, there's the, the old one. Um, some paper gaskets, so one on, on each side of this. And this is the shield for the seal. And then there are some shims and, and a plate right here. And so I'm putting it uh, back on in reverse order. So basically the shims, uh, the plate, then the, the gasket, and then the seal gasket, and 
we'll, we'll get that uh, in place. And then basically um, we'll put this stand in place. And then on the inside of that is uh, the, the, the shield with uh, the, this being the bottom. The bolts, by the way, the, the head is back here and they run this way. So you can put the bolts in and then you know, put everything on top of it. Now I'll put the, the seal on. Okay, everything's in place. The last things are the lock washers and, and nuts. Okay, it's time to put the drums on. Uh, these drums were in really good shape. I uh, didn't even get them turned. There's plenty of uh, life left in, in them. Um, so I'm gonna put it in place and I'll show you the proper way to put the keyway uh, in place on the shaft there. Okay, the rear axle here is tapered and requires a keyway. And the this is how it goes in. So um, the angle, just like this, not like that, but like that. And you simply slide it in and then tap it in. Okay, the keyway is in place. Now the, the thick washer and then the uh, castle nut and I'll be torquing that at 150 foot-pounds. Okay, everything's in place. I'm able to, to, to turn everything. And I'm gonna hook up the hard brake line in back to that uh, slave. Okay, now on to the front and the home stretch here. I've decided to use the, the new uh, S brake hose. I'm gonna attach it uh, to the slave here first. Okay, the, the S tube is just hand tight. Uh, don't tighten anything until the very end with, uh, with brakes. And so I just lift it in place and I'll, I'll be able to just position it here and I'll hand tighten that as well. And then we'll attach the bolts. Okay, these are our new bearings and those are new races in there. Uh, I put a new seal in there as well. If you want to see how I did that, you can see the link here above. That's a, something I did about a year ago. Um, so I'm going to put this back together, the, the front uh, hub, and we'll just uh, put it in place. I'll show you the proper way uh, to uh, put on, to, to preset it and to torque it in. All righty, we put the bearings in. Have a new kit here, the spindle nut and washer kit. It's great to have new parts. Okay, the first washer to put in is the thicker washer. This one thicker in, in diameter. It's not as big as this one. This is the outer uh, one. Uh, but simply put that in um, in the groove there. Okay, now I'll put the, put, put the first nut on. Hand tight for now. And hand tight for now. Okay, now torque it fifty foot pounds.
There we go. Double check. Okay, 50 foot pounds. Pull it out. See, it turns freely still. Now, we're going to use the second washer. It's not as thick as the first one. Okay, find the slot which is right there. Goes that way. Okay, now I'll take the last nut. Same thing, 50 foot pounds. Check that. Okay, that's all you need. Still spins. Okay, now we'll put the this cap part on. Make sure you put the metal washer in there. But the last thing to do is the castle nut. Here it is. You want to torque the castle nut to 150 foot pounds. Uh, okay, you can see that it freely spins. I'm going to have to torque uh, these bolts and, and also the castle nut after I get the wheels back on and, and on the ground. Um, but the, the last thing to do for, for now is I'll be tightening all the, the brake lines uh, now that everything is in place and just being very careful and you know tightening each, each of these. Um, but I'll go all the way around the whole thing. Um, and then, this would be a separate video, and please uh, you know see the, the link here above. Well, I'll have a separate video on adding the brake fluid and, and bleeding the brakes, and, and also setting the brakes. Hey, that's it for this part of the, the project. I only get to work on this Jeep once every four or five months, and so the next time I'm here, I will finish the, the, the brake job. I forgot to point out that there is one hose I did not attach. It, it goes in the rear, so when I come back, I'll include that uh, when I uh, bleed the brakes in, in that. Uh, but this is Scott with Scott's Garage. If you got any value from this video, please give me a like. It costs you nothing, but it's a great value to me. And as always, have a great day.